All right, I'll admit, it's been a pretty depressing year to be an American feminist. I mean, they're all pretty depressing going all the way back to 1776, but this one kind of stands out compared to the other ones I've lived through. And it's in times like these that everybody needs a little good news to keep them going. And believe it or not, I actually have a bit of that for you this week. We're going to start in one of the least likely places to find good feminism news in 2022, Kentucky. See, back in 2019, state Republicans passed one of those abortion trigger laws we've been hearing so much about recently, the Human Life Protection Act. In addition to winning several most bullshit hyperbolic law name awards, also banned all abortion unless it would save the life of the mother. There is no exception for rape or incest. And of course, since that was all still unconstitutional in 2019, but everybody knew the Trump appointee laden court was about to change that, this was passed with a pending legality asterisk. Now, I know that doesn't sound like the lead into a good news story, but last Friday, Jefferson Circuit Judge Mitch Perry issued an injunction that prevented the law from going into effect and allowed abortions to continue in the state. And while I don't think his injunction will be enough to save pregnant people in Kentucky for long, it's nice to know somebody is holding the line. But it's also worth highlighting because of his reasoning. See, Perry argued that the law was inherently religious since it's rooted in the idea that life begins at conception. That's a religious idea that not only doesn't come from science, but can't reasonably be reconciled with science. So by Perry's reckoning, forcing pregnant people to abide by that law is a violation of the religious freedom. We'll keep you posted on this one as it develops. Like I said, I'm sure Perry's not going to get the last word on this, but I like that he's drawing a battle line here. And I also like his style. After pointing out that the argument a six-week-old pebble has a soul can only be religious in nature, he adds a quick fucking duh in the form of, quote, this is not a particularly close call, end quote. Of course, even our good news usually comes with bad news. Like I was excited to see a story last week about the Mennonites in Canada making moves to try to draw more women into the ministry, which is pretty cool. They even commissioned a book that collected essays from women in church leadership meant to inspire other women to take up the mantle. Which, sure, it would be better if they just weren't religious, but if women are going to be religious at the very least, they should be in religious leadership. So partial kudos to the Mennonites made all the more partial because apparently they censored the fuck out of one of the essays when Winnipeg pastor Mary Ann Isaac had the audacity to spend a chunk of her essay talking about LGBTQ inclusion. So yeah, they're making progress, I guess, but they're doing it with the park and break still engaged. All that being said, I do actually have some unambiguously good news to wrap up on, and it's a story I really wasn't expecting. According to a new analysis from everybody's favorite secular statistician, Ryan P. Burge, when it comes to godlessness in Generation Z, the women actually outnumber the men. That's right, among Zoomers, or at least the ones old enough to be captured in adult data, 49% of women don't identify with any religion compared with 48% of men. Now, that might not seem like a huge gap, but in every previous generation, the men outnumbered the women. And by a lot. It's not hard to imagine why, of course, women have been the targets of a lot more religious bigotry than men. But that was true from my generation as well. And for whatever fucking stupid reason, women were still way more likely to be religious. So that's what I've got for you in terms of good news. Now sucks, yes, but the kids are all right. And on that note, I'll hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Marsh. Marsh. 